The process for making a Daniel Defense Rifle is a very lengthy process. Um, starts obviously with, with concept, with engineering. Uh, you, have to, you have to do your background work to make sure that the, the product that you're releasing is, is wanted. It, there's, a, there's a placement for it in the market. Um, once you, once you kind of get the initial idea set, then it, it goes into the testing required to, to make sure that whatever that particular product is, is that, it, that it's effective and that it you know, exceeds what the end user is, is going to be looking to do with it. Hey, my name's G.B. Ash. Here at Daniel Defense, I'm the engineering manager. Work in the design department. We create all of the uh, designs for the new components that go on our weapons here in a 3D CAD system called SolidWorks. This allows us to create the parts in actual size in a virtual environment. We can assemble the weapons, make sure that all the fits are made together like we'd like. We have the capability in this program to do finite element analysis to check how the part, parts would wear in, in their uh, assemblies as, as you're actually using the weapon. Then from here we can program the parts. We have a uh, prototype machine that we can run a, a prototype to verify the fit and function aesthetics of the part before we send it out to the shop floor for the guys to manufacture parts out of actual materials. It's easy to design a, a part that's effective. It's difficult to design a part that is effective can be manufactured relatively easily and it's, it's easily transferred into mass production. So from there, actual production begins. The equipment that Daniel Defense uses to, to manufacture most of the components that we have are, is state of the art. We have you know, a tremendous amount of CNC uh, equipment. That's something that we as a company have invested a tremendous amount of money and, and time into developing processes and, and making sure that the equipment that we have is, is what we need to, to do the job as, as fast and as accurately as possible. We also implement a, a very impressive piece of equipment, our hammer forge and the barrel cell line, implementing robotics in that particular cell and it's, it's something that from the production standpoint you're always looking at, at ways to, to improve, you're always looking at ways to, to increase efficiency. Hi, my name is Steve Fairbanks. I work for Daniel Defense. I'm going to take you through the steps of making a raw barrel blank into a complete rifle. First, we take this blank, we put it in this gun drill over here, and it bores the inside out. After it takes the inside of the blank, we move it over to what we call a kuma, which will turn the outside of the blank, make it smooth, and put nubs on the end. After we put the nubs on the end, we take it out, we clean it, we put it in the hone, which is going up and down right here. The hone has stones inside of it. It opens up and cleans the inside of the barrel out to make it smooth for the finished product. After we remove the barrel blank from the hone, we bring it over and we put it on the hammer forge. It loads the blank, the hammers start closing, as the mandrel goes in. The hammers forge around the mandrel to make the rifling and the chamber. As it's finished, it stretches the metal out so you have a final product like this. You know, once, once production is completed and all of the core component parts are finished, then assembly is, is just as critical as, as actually machining the, the parts. You have very skilled armors that painstakingly assemble all of, all of these components to make sure that everything functions, everything is exactly the way it needs to be, and they're basically our last line of defense in terms of quality. We've got very detailed, stringent processes on what outlines they must follow through each step of the manufacturing process, and um, we've got a lot of redundancy out there from a QA standpoint, but they check and double check, and um, it's, it's amazing to see what all it goes through from start to finish as the material arrives in to us as raw material and is scanned off the truck, it's um, documented and scanned at each station. So we know not only where the materials came from, but what machine it was run on, what operator was on that machine. I mean, it's the accountability and the traceability there for, for any problems is, is something huge and quality has always been at the, you know, the forefront of, of our business. I'm Raymond Poss, quality assurance inspector in the barrel cell. We just received these barrels back from an outside vendor and they've been black oxided. We're doing checks to make sure that they're still in spec and in tolerance. 
in these barrels, I'm doing a ball drop, which will tell me if the chamber depth is correct. This one's good. There are two depths in the chamber that we check, so there's a second test. That number's good. I'm at the end of a long line of people who want to make you the best they are you can buy. Hey, I'm Sheila with the Mill Turn Cell. I'm production supervisor at Daniel Defense, and today we have gas blocks. Um, they're about a seven minute circle time, and we have two checks um, on these gas blocks every 10 parts. The 100% check is our no go no um, depth gauge. We check both sides. And the other 100% um, check is our height gauge, but we can also use a caliper. It's supposed to be 1,000, but it's, we're dead on it, so they're good to go. Um, we run these in 300 piece lots, and then we send them on to our outside services. All right, so my name is Mark Levins. Do the tech support here to help everybody out. Right now we're doing the gas port system. Make sure our uh, carriage bolt and everything works properly with our gas system. I'm checking the inside of this hole right now. Make sure there's no tamp or uh, no burrs on the inside. Tamper's nice and clean. Next step is take a drop pin of the right caliper, drop it through, make sure everything's nice and smooth. Take our pins, known diameters for our gas port system. Got a go and a no-go. There's our no-go and our go. Make sure everything works properly. Next step is to make sure we have the right location. Check our location on this to make sure everything's gonna be ru running properly. All right, once we have that, we'll bring it back here. Put it back in its place. And here at Daniel Defense, we put everything at proper mill specs so we know everything's operating perfectly for you. My name is Burt Miller. I'm a quality insurance engineer at Daniel Defense. Uh, just going to tell you a little bit about this machine you're looking at here. Uh, it's called a coordinate measurement machine, and what it does is basically inspects each part that we make. You can hear the beeps as it's going. It's actually logging data points every time it takes a beep. Uh, that way, I can generate an inspection report based on our drawing. Uh, that's how we evaluate our parts dimensionally. Uh, machine is accurate within about one ten thousandth of an inch. On this particular part, which is the upper receiver, we check about 195 points, which is, uh, which is a lot in comparison to many of our competitors or, or anyone for that matter, it's, it's that detailed. Engineering will send me a CAD model of that part and basically I will write my whole program based on that CAD model. I can pick any point on this model and it'll check the part and tell me within a 10,000th of an inch where that dimension is. Uh, if you look over here, the guys are working on a micro view and it's the same concept. The only difference is it uses a high definition camera. It's integrated with precision scales to do the same thing, just take dimensional measurements. And as you can see, just these two pieces of equipment here, you're looking at about $300,000 roughly. That just gives you an idea of our commitment to quality at Daniel Defense. Any mechanism can, can conceivably work in a perfect environment. If, if you don't have any variables, it's, it's easy from a design perspective to, to have something that, that can function the way that you intend. One of the unique challenges with working with a firearm that can see any number of different um, situations is that all conceivable uses have to be accounted for. We have to look into whether or not the, the weapons function in extreme heat, whether or not they function in driving rain and extreme cold. Uh, not only for military specifications, but also for the end user that, that might be going out and, and doing a competitive shoot in sub-zero weather. And we, we want to make sure that everything, everything to do with this rifle is, is compatible with whatever conditions it might see. Pretty much anything you can dream up, they've put this gun through on that video and it comes through with flying colors every time. And it, 
it'll it'll that's the the best testament I think that we have um, other than our than our actual folks here and and all the processes we go through is what this rifle can actually take check it out <laughs>